Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to do another deep dive on a very hyper-specific topic. We're talking about Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, also known as EDS. As an aside, if I am mispronouncing this, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I am constantly suffering from, I've read a word a million times, but I've never actually heard it said aloud or said it aloud often. Uh, so I looked at pronunciation and I'm trying my best, but please feel free to correct me in the comments ever, always. I'm still learning and trying. Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is a grouping of connective tissue disorders which affect the various connective tissues of your body, primarily skin, joints, and blood vessel walls. The connective tissue in our body is made up of a very complex blend of protein and other substances that provide strength and elasticity to the tissue in our bodies. And when folks have EDS, something with their connective tissue is not working as it's supposed to. Now I phrase this this way because EDS is kind of an umbrella term and there's a number of different types of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome that can affect different types of connective tissue in your body. At the time of me filming this, there's 13 different variations of EDS that folks are frequently diagnosed with, and each of these can affect the body in different ways. However, people's experiences with each of these varieties of EDS is also going to be very individualized, person to person. Now, there is a lot of misinformation about EDS online, especially on places like TikTok and Twitter and Instagram, and while those can be really useful resources for a lot of good, helpful information, they can also spread a lot of bad disinformation. And one of the big myths that this spreads is that people with EDS can't get body piercings. And over my time working as a professional piercer, I have just found this not to be true. I have quite a few clients who have various forms of EDS who have healthy, happy, successful body piercings, who stretch their ears, who do all sorts of things that you would like to do with body modification. Now it's important for me to acknowledge that EDS can make getting and healing piercings significantly more difficult and that's what I want to talk about in this video. Now like I mentioned there's multiple different types of EDS and all of them can affect the body differently. But a couple core symptoms that tend to go along with EDS and really affect us when we're talking about doing body piercings are as follows. The biggest one is probably skin hyperextensibility. This is a measure of the skin's stretch. Most folks with EDS have a range from mild to extreme hyperextension on their skin, and this can absolutely affect how the skin handles piercings, wounds, tattoos, all of these things. Tissue fragility is another really big element when it comes to EDS. Folks with EDS can have much more fragile skin, but also fragile tissues inside their body like blood vessels and capillaries. This can lead to more severe scarring or in particular with EDS, this cigarette paper type scarring that looks like this thin, wrinkled, very fragile scar tissue. Clients with EDS can be more prone to bruising, and yes, that includes after a body piercing. They can also be prone to prolonged healing, and this is a big one. Between hyperextensive skin that responds very differently to being pierced or tattooed or modified in any way, issues with healing that can make healing processes take longer and be harder to heal, and issues with scar formation and more severe scarring. I can see why all of this sounds like a recipe for someone just to say, oh, if you have EDS, you can't have piercings, don't bother. And I think for a long time, that's kind of been the mentality from body piercers and medical professionals alike. Again, having EDS presents a lot of challenges to having safe, healthy piercings. So a lot of folks just went, I'm just not going to bother with it. But the problem with that is that having EDS doesn't mean that you're not going to want piercings, you're not going to want tattoos and modifications, and there are plenty of other disorders that we work with that make it very hard for people to heal piercings. I've done videos on my channel already about psoriasis, about HRT and medication for trans folks that can affect piercings healing, and honestly anything that affects your immune system affects how you heal. Anything that affects your skin affects how you heal. Rosacea, acne, diabetes, people who have gone through cancer treatments, people who have received donated organs or donated tissue, people on certain medications. If we just threw our hands up and said, well, this is going to make getting and healing a piercing really hard, so we're just never going to do it and we're going to tell you you can't have piercings, there's huge percentages of the population that we would just never pierce. The good news is it doesn't mean it's a no, it just means we need to approach this with a little bit more care. So what I'd like to do is walk you through what it looks like when I work on a client with EDS, just as kind of an example. And to start, I don't 
just immediately write them off and say no. I like to start with a consultation and I really strongly prefer this consultation to be in person if at all possible. Sometimes I can do a consult like this online, but it's generally much better off in person. So if someone wants to get pierced in me and they let me know they have EDS, we start off, I just kind of want to talk to them about it. I ask them what type of EDS they have, when they were able to get diagnosed, and how it presents for them. Now, no client is required to tell me their medical history or background, but I will say that when we're working with unique conditions like EDS, it's really helpful the more we know. So I like to start by getting a lot of information. This also goes hand in hand with a physical consultation. I like to have the client explain to me how their form of EDS presents in them. Because one thing I've noticed is that while there is some really good literature and really good research and information about EDS online from the medical community, there is also a lot of really not good research and not good information online from the medical community. And I basically see this with any rarer or less understood or less common disorder where people's lived experiences of having this disorder and functioning with it every day oftentimes do not align with what doctors or medical professionals say or assume the diagnosis should look like, feel like, or be like. And from working with lots of clients with EDS and lots of friends with EDS, it can be very hard to get an accurate diagnosis from your doctor. A lot of doctors and medical professionals are actually not very well educated about a lot of these disorders. And patients end up having to teach their doctors or show them studies that they need to read. So I think it's really important on one hand for the client to let me know the type of EDS they have. And I like to go home and do research and do reading if I'm not super familiar with that type. But I also like to talk to them about their lived experience. How does their EDS present? What do they notice with it? Do they have any other piercings? How did those heal for them? How do wounds in general heal for them? What does it look like if they fall and scrape their knee, if they get a paper cut? How does their body heal? If the person has any scars, I like to ask if I can take a look at them and also feel them, even if they're on unrelated parts of the body that we're not piercing today. I want to know typically how they tend to scar. Do they tend towards cigarette paper scarring? Do they tend towards lumpy, bumpy, hypertrophic scarring? What does scarring look like on their bodies? This all helps me prepare for what I might encounter down the line doing a piercing for them and helping it heal. This is the part where it can be a little unpopular. I usually don't like to pierce folks the same day that we do this consultation. I usually like to go home and do more research, do more reading, think about and plan accordingly for what we wanna do piercing wise and go from there. Now that's not to say in every single instance I'm gonna tell someone, no, I won't pierce you same day I meet you. And there's definitely clients who come in, especially clients who have EDS but have quite a few other piercings. They're already experienced and knowledgeable in how their body heals piercings, what they need to do to heal. They already kind of know what to expect. I'm a little bit more comfortable piercing same day. But if someone comes in who doesn't have any piercings or only has their earlobes done, has EDS, it can present in more severe ways if they have some concerning looking scarring and if they're talking about wanting a lot of really advanced and really difficult piercings i'm probably going to say hey let's pump the brakes i'm going to do a little bit more research and reading i'm going to make sure i really understand what i'm working with when i'm working on your body because i do not take it lightly that you are trusting me with your body we're going to go from there the from there usually looks kind of boring. I am not going to lie to you. I like to start typically with like one piercing at a time. If I've never pierced you before, if I don't know how you're going to heal, or I'm seeing concerning scarring or concerning blood vessels or concerning tissue in the area we're piercing. And I usually like to start with a pretty easy piercing. So if you come to me and you're like, Hey, I have EDS. I want to do a full ear project. I know I want second and third lobes, a constant industrial and an antitragus. We're going to start with some lobes. We're gonna start with like one lobe and we're just gonna see how it heals. And if it heals great, awesome. Then the next time we'll do two. And if that heals great, awesome. But what I'm not gonna do is just say, all right, cool, I'll take your money and do five piercings for you all at once and overwhelm an already easily overwhelmed immune system. That's not what I'm gonna do. In that same vein, I'm also gonna start you off with really basic jewelry. It's probably just gonna be a plain titanium bead or disc. And this is because I want this to be as easy to heal as possible. I don't want us to have to worry about a larger piece of jewelry, maybe with decorative prong settings or decorative ends being easier to catch or snag. But I also want this piercing to be really easy to troubleshoot because the key when I'm working on clients with EDS is I like to do two week virtual check-ins. So every two weeks they send me pictures of how the piercing is healing. And we have a tiny simple piece of jewelry. It's really easy for me to see the health of the tissue around the piercing. It's not obscured by a larger piece of jewelry. 
And this is because, like I mentioned before, EDS causes a lot of things in connective tissue that can make healing and piercing really difficult. A slower immune response, gonna make your piercing take longer to heal and be harder to heal. Super fragile skin, that's really hard for your body to heal. And being prone to really difficult to deal with forms of scarring, definitely not making anything easier with healing and piercing. So I like to take a lot of time, do a consultation, do a lot of research and make sure I'm prepared first. I like to start with a slower plan, start with one, maybe two piercings, easier to heal piercings, and start with very simple jewelry and monitor how it heals thoroughly first. Once I've been working with a client who has EDS and I understand how their body heals, then we can kind of move forward with a little bit more comfort. I definitely have some clients with EDS who heal great. Here's a picture of one of my clients. She has EDS and she also has an epidemis nevus birthmark. Now that birthmark is not safe for us to pierce through, but look, we snuck that cute little first lobe in there. The lobe and the conch are healed and the flat piercing is healing. We've swapped them to decorative pieces. I've worked with her a bunch. Her body happens to heal phenomenally with EDS. Now in her EDS presentation, her cartilage is very thin. It's very flexible. She has a lot of hyperextension when it comes to her skin. She also has very hypermobile joints. That's not nearly as fun, but with the hyperextensibility of her skin and with her very thin and very malleable cartilage, her ears actually tend to heal way better than a lot of other ear piercings do. Now that being said, she ends up needing to downsize really early on and she gets more downsizes than most people do. She might be buying three or four downsized barbells because her ears are just so thin and while they do puff up right away, part of that EDS immune response, that swelling goes down and if we leave those bars long, they migrate like that on her. Migration is super easy with her type of EDS. So we have to really stay on top of that when we pierce her. We have to really stay on top of downsizes. We have to use slightly larger gauges when we're piercing her to help prevent and mitigate that migration. That being said, her experience with EDS is not everyone's experience with EDS. I have another client who doesn't really deal with migration, who does not have super thin cartilage. Their cartilage feels fairly average. Same with their skin. He bruises and swells like it is nobody's business post piercing. Uh, I will not be posting any pictures of fresh work that I have done on him because it does not look great. Um, but we have to use very, very long bars when I work on him. He's almost always guaranteed to get some pretty severe bruising. Um, and he tends to heal all right. It just takes a really long time. I'm talking about like year healing time on just lobes and like two or three year healing time on cartilage. Now it does heal. It doesn't tend to have irritation bumps. It doesn't tend to have problems while it's healing. It is just very swollen and in that healing phase for a very long time. So something else important to consider is that EDS does present so differently between people. And that's on top of the fact that there's already 13 different types of EDS that we know of so far, potentially there's more that people can end up having. So EDS can look super different one client to another. Part of why I like to do that long consultation first, and I don't like to rush into piercing. So I like to do my research, really take my time, understand from a medical perspective what's going on, but also listen to the client about their lived experience with EDS and make sure I'm tailoring my work to them. That's kind of like a general overview of how I handle it when a client comes to me with EDS. But like I said, it's different. So it might look different every time. But the reason why I wanted to talk about that is because I really wanted to show an example of what it looks like when a piercer is really willing to take the extra time and put in the extra effort to work with you, to work with your disorder, to work with your body to make things heal. If you have EDS and you're looking to get a piercing done and you go to a piercer and they just immediately go, absolutely not, you can't be pierced with EDS, I'm not even going to pierce you, that's a red flag. I think that's probably not a very good piercer because EDS does not have to be a disqualifying factor to get pierced. Now one thing I will say is that it's a little bit different if a piercer just goes, no, you have EDS, I can't pierce you, versus I actually don't have enough education and training and I don't feel comfortable piercing you with EDS yet, but let me try and refer you to someone in the area who might be. I think it's great for a piercer to acknowledge that they don't have this knowledge, they don't have this skill set, and they don't quite feel comfortable doing this piercing for you or guiding you through the healing process. Um, piercers should say no if they know something is out of their depth, but for a piercer to just completely turn you away for having EDS, not even talk to you about it, not even consult with you about it, I don't like that. On the other end of a spectrum, if you tell a piercer you have EDS and they just go, yeah, whatever, it's fine, we'll pierce you, I think that's also a red flag. Because as much as I wish that we could just magically do a good enough or straight enough piercing with the right quality jewelry and the fact that you have EDS won't matter in your healing process, 
That would be a bold face lie. And while yes, some people have EDS and get pierced and have no problems whatsoever, other people have a hell of a time with it. And just knowing the immune system risks and the skin and connective tissue risks when it comes to EDS, that should be something that a piercer treats with a little bit more seriousness and a little bit more respect. And it's going to take the time to work with you and understand that your healing process is probably not going to look like the healing process of someone who doesn't have EDS. Now, a lot of this video has focused on some of the negatives of having EDS, but I definitely want to talk about the positives because there totally are some. And one big positive can be ear stretching. I have quite a few clients with EDS who stretch their ears, and for the most part, a lot of them have an easier time stretching than your average person. Again, most folks with EDS experience some degree of skin hyperextensibility. That means their skin is extra stretchy. That means when it comes to stretching things like lobe piercings, people with EDS a lot of times have a cheat code. It's really easy for them to stretch their ears. Their skin is already naturally super elastic, super stretchy. Sometimes the way their EDS affects their collagen actually makes their collagen more efficient at stretching, which can make ear stretching really easy. I definitely have clients with EDS who can stretch up their ears much faster than we would ever typically consider safe. And because they have EDS, it works fine for them. Now a caveat, EDS presents differently in everyone and skin hyperextensibility also tends to come hand in hand with tissue fragility. So there are some folks who have EDS and just think, I've got EDS, I'm gonna stretch super fast, but they're really prone to micro tears because their skin is more fragile. So this isn't always a cheat code, but it definitely can be in certain circumstances. And if you have EDS and you're stretching your ears and your plugs are just falling out left and right, you probably can try stretching up a little bit quicker. I wouldn't skip sizes. I wouldn't use unsafe stretching methods like tapers or tapes because tissue fragility is a serious concern with EDS and tears and blowouts can be more severe with EDS. But as long as you're going slow, you're going careful and you're listening to your body, a lot of times folks with EDS can move a little bit quicker through Another area is those folks who have EDS and it does really affect their cartilage of the ear like the client that I showed you earlier. For a lot of folks, part of the way their EDS presents is with them having either very large or very small ears with a very thin, very malleable cartilage. And this thin cartilage tends to, in general, again, it's different for every person, but in my professional experience, tends to heal a little bit better than thicker, harder cartilage. Now, migration is what you kind of trade for that. You heal a little bit better and faster, but your stuff tends to want to migrate a little bit more. So you have to be more on top of downsizing. You might buy more downsize bars. But there's definitely some ways and some presentations of EDS that can actually make it easier for people to get and have piercings or stretch and have modifications rather than harder. And while everything is situational and it all depends on your body and your experience with EDS, I wanted to take the time to mention those things because I think it's important to focus on the positive, especially when there's so many false negative narratives about EDS making body piercing impossible or unsafe. Let's talk about the fact that for some people, EDS makes piercing and stretching easier or better. It is not a one size fits all or even a one size fits most diagnosis or disorder. It, different people are going to experience having EDS differently. But the big thing that I want you to take away from this video is that it does not have to be a disqualifying factor. Having EDS does not mean that you can't get piercings, stretch piercings, and modify your body in the way that you want. It just means that you should approach doing these things with a little bit more care and a little bit more caution and a lot bit more patience. Find a piercer or an artist who's going to be willing to work with you, who takes the fact that you have EDS seriously and is going to take the time to research your condition, but listen to you about your lived experiences with it, who's going to take the time to approach doing this work for you from a place of care and concern, and understand that going into this, our main goal should be getting stuff to heal. Once we get stuff to heal, we can worry about making it look pretty. We can, we can worry about adding more. But for the most part, if you have EDS and you're getting a body piercing, I just really want it to heal and heal well for you. And that might look like slowing down your goals, starting small with one or two piercings at a time, starting with simpler jewelry, doing more check-ins and more follow-ups, maybe doing more in-person checkups and getting more downsizes, and just kind of being a little bit more careful with yourself and careful with your body. But it in no way means that you can't have piercings or that piercings aren't for you.
If you're interested in learning more about EDS and body piercing, I do have a blog post all about it on my website, which I'm going to link in the comment section down below. And I really hope if you have this disorder or you know someone who does, this video can be helpful in shedding some light on what it can look like to get pierced with this. And if you're a body piercer at home, I hope this video can give you some inspiration on how to work with people who have different disorders and different conditions that can affect their body piercing. As per usual, if you like this video, if you like my content and the stuff that I put out, please hit like and subscribe. Your support means the world to me, and I can't wait to sit down and hang out with y'all again soon. Bye!